My name is Danny Pickering and I'm a tutor in the Faculty of the Humanities and Social Sciences at Victoria University of Wellington. My first love actually what I thought was going to be research uh, and tutoring was just you know a really convenient way of you know supplementing the, the, the scholarship income like I'm already on campus so it became just the thing to do but I've really come to fall in love with it like just being the kind of the front line at the university in terms of uh, having the strongest relationship with students because you know we have the most face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one time with them and just just getting to watch them sort of learn and grow and be ready to sort of take on the world it's so saccharine so cliche but it's also so true <laughs> I think one of the hugest things and it's one that the university loves to sweep under the rug is just how much pastoral care work tutors end up doing the official university policy is that tutors don't do pastoral care work that when a student is going through a struggle of some sort um, we get them sorted in terms of their study plan to get back on their feet and everything but when it comes to actually helping them we are supposed to pass them on to um, the relevant campus service whatever it is in practice this is not how it works what students end up doing is not seeking out the requisite campus service they just go to the people that they know and trust the best. And because their tutors are the people that they just get the most one-on-one -on -one time with and the most face-to-face -face time with, in an ideal non-COVID situation, um, they come to us first. And what happens is, you know, the official university policies, we just shunt them on. It's like, we can't do that. There's a, that that's the policy kind of expectation of us. But the, the ethical and moral expectation is you know we've got to make sure that it, you know we're not trained counselors but we need to make sure that they at least feel heard um, before we can do all the you know help them navigate the institution sort of work that has to come after but we've got to be human beings first and the university just denies that that's a part of our work tutors don't really get a say and when we're moving online moving offline being expected to do both at the same time we have to roll with the punches um, but then there's also the expectation now that we are supposed to be able to, um, yeah, switch both and do go online, go offline. So moving back and forth, I've seen trimester after trimester since the pandemic started that students drop off at rates that they weren't before the pandemic because we constantly have to shift mediums, the medium in which we're teaching. It's basically working two jobs because teaching online and sometimes it can feel like pulling teeth trying to get students to participate because we're trying to teach it in the same way that we teach offline and it, it's not the same. It's not that it can't be you know, equivalent and you get the similar outcomes from it, but it's just we're not trained to do online teaching. We're trained to do offline teaching and have these kinds of face-to-face -face connections. And you know, a best practice for how to do stuff online hasn't quite emerged yet, but the university doesn't acknowledge that that work is basically doing two jobs at once. Um, in fact, it refuses to acknowledge that at, at Vic Uni. And so we're stuck doing twice as much work for the same pay, basically. I think the most important issue uh, in tertiary education at the moment has a lot to do with precarity. Um, and that's like at the core of the issue, right? As so many of us are precarious workers. We live contract to contract. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be employed next trimester, and so it becomes really hard to plan my future that way. At Vic Uni, it's got kind of an unusual um, arrangement for collective agreements. There's six at Vic. That's more than any other university in the country. And so the workers are a bit more divided in that sense, and it really hampers our ability to kind of exercise a sort of workplace democracy. Tutors are segregated into our own collective agreement. And when we're working trimester by trimester on different contracts each time, you know, I've been a tutor for almost four years. I've had 10 contracts in that time. I have to rejoin the union every single time I sign a new contract. So we hemorrhage members in our collective all the time for that reason. We have to campaign around, hey, don't forget to rejoin the union if you're tutoring again this trimester. And it's just, it really highlights how precarity is really undermining our ability to bargain for better pay, for fair pay, for everything that we do.